Okay, so final questions. They go hand in hand. Asking about my biggest gain and what was that like emotionally and asking about my biggest loss and what was that like emotionally. So starting with the biggest gain first since that's the lesser valuable lesson of the two questions. There's really two answers here because you know, I used to trade penny stocks a lot but then I shifted to options. So I've got my biggest gain in penny stocks and I've got my biggest gain in options. My biggest dollar gain outright came from a penny stock. I made $25,000 and to me it was just pretty much completely dumb luck. I was maybe in my sixth or seventh month of trading penny stocks. I was a freshman at DePaul University here in Chicago. I put in about $4,000 to this stock that I just I don't know, came across on iHub or something and just got completely lucky. It got pumped and I didn't know what was going on, but I was greedy enough to hold it for a 500% gain, but not stupid enough to not sell it at a 500% gain. So I ended up pulling out $30,000 and that was definitely a really big emotional high because, you know, at the time I felt like, oh, you know, I know what I'm doing and definitely felt like I was on cloud nine and I remember specifically telling a lot of my friends about it and kind of bragging in a way because I remember a lot of them and this was my perception they never said this I felt that a lot of them thought I was stupid for getting into penny stocks and just getting into the stock market in general we had all just started out at school and you know I kind of felt like the perception is why are you doing this you know you need to be focusing on your studies and you know we're all going to get good grades and you know graduate and get good jobs and you're going to be trying to figure out stocks so I definitely kind of rubbed it in some people's faces and you know looking back I felt like a pretty big dumbass about that a dick so to say and realized that it really didn't do me any good to share that success with them because I sure as hell wasn't going to tell them about all the struggles I had had up to that point. I wasn't going to tell them that I started with $7,000 and I lost it all and had to put in $4,000 to restart my account. So why am I going to tell them about, you know, the success? So that's the penny stock story. So then, you know, two years later, I was bigger into options at that point and my biggest gain in options came from Apple and I made seventeen thousand dollars on a day trade and that was on this day here Apple had lost 520 and just this was a great clean breakdown below 520 and it flushed out and you know I caught a big move lower and I definitely felt like after that gain that I had arrived as a option trader that that was the validation I was seeking in confirming that you know I know what I'm doing and I think I also kind of got complacent because while I was motivated to make more money I felt like after that alright now it's just gonna start to come and trickle in and I don't really need to improve because this is what I'm capable of so this is just what's going to happen to me all the time. Now later that evening I looked back because that day after I made my 17k I just kind of called it a day and then I came back and I remember I shorted Apple from like 420 to 413. Well you look at the thing it ended up going to 400 bucks. My position that I had if I would have executed better could have easily been a 100 to 200 thousand dollar trade profit wise so as far as how I dealt with it you know I, I don't think I dealt with it well because I didn't have good perspective as I stated I kind of felt like I arrived and this is a good lead in to you know my biggest loss because it came <laughs> two days after my biggest gain on this day here literally two days later so April 17th 2013 is that what this is
Yeah, it's got to be. So then two days later, April 19th, on this day that I just circled, that was my biggest loss ever. It ended up being much bigger than my biggest gain ever. The total amount was a $42,000 loss in one trade, which was about 85% of my portfolio at the time I was trading. And, you know, I didn't deal with that very well at all. I, I would honestly say it was extremely depressing and life-changing, really, and it consumed me for a long time. I don't think I got over it. This was April 2013. I honestly don't think I got over it until September or October of last year. So, you know, what, May, June, July, August, I mean, about four to six months, that loss was legit on my mind every day, all day, and was really a motivating factor for a lot of the things I was doing, which you could guess probably wasn't a good motivating factor for everything I was doing. And basically what happened before I go into, you know, how I feel like I dealt with it, what happened is, you know, this day right here when I made the 17K on a great trade? Well, I tried to make the exact same trade on April 19th. But the problem was the price was different. You can see Apple had lost 420. That day it was around 390, so you're talking about a $30 drop already. Secondly, the price action was different. You could see volumes lower. The range was tighter. Okay, It wasn't breaking below the previous day's low like it was on that day I made the big gain. So just overall, the setup was different. And as you might have been able to guess before I even told you what happened, the result was very different as well. So that was the, that's the execution side of, you know, what I did wrong. I tried to make a trade that wasn't there. So the other thing that's interesting is I was actually live trading at the time. And how I dealt with it immediately is I really just kind of shut down. I felt extremely embarrassed and reckless. I turned off the live trading system without saying anything to anyone. I just made a message in chat that kind of said, fuck, blew up my account. Really sorry, guys. I'll see you Monday. And, you know, after I signed off, I just remember kind of losing control and just yelling, being extremely upset with myself and, you know, wanting to punch a hole through the wall. Why the fuck would I do something like that? And I remember looking in the mirror and saying to myself, are you happy now? Are you happy with what you did? because I was just so down on myself. And, you know, what hurt the most is that after that, I was forced to just question my discipline. After doing this for a few years, how could I have a setup like that go so terribly wrong? How could I lose so much money? How could I be so irresponsible? The only way is because I wasn't disciplined. And that was hard to admit. And like I said, I think I didn't really admit that to myself until a few months later. So then, you know, I remember calling my girlfriend and asking her to leave work to, you know, I just wanted her, wanted somebody and, you know, called her and she came up and I remember just sitting on my couch looking out my window and I was trying to cry. I was trying to force myself to cry so that I could really show her how painful that morning was and you know get her to really grasp what was going on because I don't think she really I didn't think she really understood it but you know she just kind of told me that it was okay and every good trader probably loses a lot of money and I kind of brushed her off but you know she's probably right and she was a big support system for me on that day and you know that told me a lot about her and helped me learn a lot about myself and, uh, you know, now we're going on two years together, in case you care about that. But so she calmed me down, and then I went and shot around at the gym, because basketball has always been an outlet for me, 
really my entire life. Started playing at a young age, and if I'm frustrated or anything, I can always find solace on the basketball court. So that's how I dealt with it in the media, in the immediate term. And then that weekend, I watched the film of my big loss, and you know, kind of laughed at myself because it was so clear on the film how bad of a trade I was making when I was watching. But that's the way it always is, right? You know, when you think about it in hindsight and you see it, of course, it looks stupid. But, you know, the reason I say that I dealt with the loss for months is because as bad as I wanted to, I couldn't shake how embarrassed I was and disappointed in myself really all summer. Because remember, I had this service. I had just launched Watch Him Trade in March. And this shit happened in April. Subscribers were on the up and up. And as you might expect, I lost a lot of subscribers after that. And you know, it, it was just hard to deal with that I felt like my business was struggling as a result of that and I felt that the only way to fix things was to just make perfect trades time and time again because I knew, or at least I thought I knew what people thought about me and I had to change what they think about me. I had to, I had to recoup all of my losses and show them that I'm the best and that's where I want but then, you know, finally in the fall, I just kind of had this revelation that, you know what, I care way too much about people's perception of me. I always wanted so bad to be the best trader, and what I wanted even more was that for everyone else to think I'm the best trader. And that psychological makeup was really actually restricting me from becoming the best trader I could be. It was counterproductive. So in the fall, around September, October, I just kind of said to myself, you know what, you're not allowed to trade with more than one contract at a time until you prove to yourself that you're disciplined as fuck. And that's really what it comes down to. And I started to trade much better from that point on. I stopped being so analytical with my analysis and just started focusing more on price action. I stopped trying to impress anyone but myself. I stopped caring when people unsubscribed. I stopped caring when somebody did subscribe. And I just started being happy about everything I was putting into trading. I just got my energy level back up and just kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to be happy if I make $50 profit if it means I made 50% on my trade. And I'm going to be pissed off if I only lose $50 if it meant I lost 25%. I just started caring a lot more about the details not as much about the money. I raised my standards of what being a great trader is and stopped worrying about my reputation and just started worrying about how I and only I felt about the work I was putting in. You know, I could go on and on about this and how it affected me and how I dealt with it. I'll probably dedicate a couple chapters of a book to it later on in my life, but what you need to know at the end of the day is that the big loss sucked and by not acknowledging the real problem right away, which was my constant desire to impress everyone, the loss consumed me for months. And it wasn't until I lost that desire and focused on my own growth for myself that I started to get over it and really be at peace with myself and start to improve as a trader. And that is a wrap on all the questions I received. So are there any questions about anything that was discussed here? Questions going once. So in twice. All right, guys, thank you for attending. This was recorded, so it will be posted to the site and emailed out to you for your review. And I will see you tomorrow morning. We'll have another one of these next week scheduled to be determined this weekend. Thank you for attending, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.